Hey guys, how's it going? It's Fuzz here from Never Going Home Podcast. Got a new episode for you today with Andrew from Specialist Subject Records, who, um, Specialist Subject, for those who don't know, are a record label and also a shop based in uh, Bristol. And they're just about the exchange. They're heavily involved in the punk rock scene, putting on shows, uh, promoting records, picking up bands, um, just making good things happen. So, um, go and check them out. They're on Facebook, Instagram, all over the place. So, uh, specialist subject records. I forgot to add in at the end. My uh, the habits and mindsets uh, exhibition is a uh, is is currently up now in the Castle Emporium in Cardiff, which is on Womanby Street, over the road from Club E for Bach. Uh, there's work up on the wall. It's all for sale, and it's in collaboration with Heads Above the Waves, an amazing uh, non-profit mental health. Uh, organization that works with young people and provides them with the tools and the help that they need to um, overcome some difficult times that they might be having with mental uh, mental health. So they're really, really good eggs. All the works for sale. Any profits will be split with Heads Above the Waves. Um, they've got loads of merchandise in the store as well. They're open till uh, maybe five or six, I think, uh, but they're open on the weekend on Saturday. So go and pop in, support local businesses, independent shops, um i'll probably have some zines for sale there uh in the zines we've got some um some interviews kind of like the podcast uh some interviews and a lot of the documentary images from the punk scene that i've been doing for the last couple of years so i'm slowly releasing them through the zine um go and check them out they're good good people doing good stuff um also if you can't make it into cardiff the show comes down on monday but if you can't make it into cardiff if you go to fuzzchukas.bigcartel.com um where I'll be uh, mailing out zines and stickers and the work will be for sale, so check out the big cartel. We've got some lovely bass sounds coming through downstairs. <laughs> Sound check for the band tonight. Do you know what, who's the band tonight? Uh, it's the Bomb Pops are headlining. I, I don't know, know who them. else is. Yeah. Quite a big name, right? Yeah, well, they're on Fat Wreck. Mm. Um, right, so... Um, this impromptu podcast. Um, I'm here with uh, Andrew from Specialist Subject Records, um, shooting some portraits for the Habits and Mindsets project, and we've just put five minutes down to have a chat. We were talking about actually, like you're saying, like podcasts are kind of like a good way of having a chat, and it's weird that people seem a bit more closed these days. You know, like I just, you know what I mean? Like it's it's into. We're not as personal as we used to be. Yeah, like, I guess a podcast is a good opportunity to ask questions that you otherwise wouldn't be able to ask of people you know. Mm. So, like, um, I remember, especially Subject Records, being, like, I thought it was, um, when you were in Bangers, it was, like, your idea to just put your own music out. Is that right? Uh, kind of, yeah. It was, like, when... Like the first, the first release that we ever did for Special Subject Records was, I was doing a music tech degree in Leeds, and part of our project, we basically could decide to do whatever we wanted. So me and my friend Tom were like, okay, we're gonna record an EP, put out a seven inch, do a tour, um, and that was our like we were like a folk punk duo we were called Magnus Magnuson. So we were like cool, like call it Special Subject, like the mastermind <laughs> reference, um, and then like we did that, and then never thought I'd do anything with it again and then when like a couple of years later I was playing in Bangers and I was like working down in Cornwall and we kind of got the opportunity to release our own records for Bangers um, and just like we were going to self-release it anyway so we were like well let's just revive the name of that record label so it's like seems like it's a legit thing yeah. um, and then it kind of grew from there like we did the um, the Brits Abroad split 7 inch and then I did 7 inch for Caves because we like played with them and were like really impressed and like so often to do that and basically we were just doing it because no one else would do it yeah um like at the time there were no other labels that would be interested and we thought we could do it as well as anyone else so. it's grown though like so like i remember it being like uh, seeing it attached to like your band camp for bangers and stuff like that and i was like oh it's, it's andrew's thing it's like a little thing and then you know scenes i remember there was a couple of zines and stuff i think was there a couple of scenes that the bang you guys did with bangers? Uh, yeah, that was like Hamish's thing. Yeah, so right. well, yeah, that wasn't really like he's always done that for years as well. Yeah. Like, but then yeah, even before bangers, he was like, it's exploded, and here we are, and like, we, and it's the first time I've actually prop. I come here all the time for shows downstairs in the exchange, but it's the first time I've actually taken a bit of time to like look around, and it's just crazy. You've been really um, 
it's quite it's a cozy little shop, but it's full. Like I can't believe like so many records and tea, like merch and stuff. Yeah, well I think like since we got the opportunity to open the shop we were like right, okay, well we need loads more stock. Yeah. So it's kind of we've you know, been here just less than a year, but it's you know, we probably have five times as much stuff as we did before we opened the shops so. and it's a good sign as well because I like I don't know I'm not a business person but obviously you, you need to sell stuff to keep it flow and you've got to it's a shop mm. and I just think it's, it's pretty good that it's like sustaining and going you know because like yeah well I think it's a thing like for so long it's been like growing for so long but it's it's never really at the point where it's made money so it's like we're, con- it, we're constantly itself, like if it keeps itself going though yeah but it's like like we've constantly been like okay well this does it all right so let's try something extra and like doing the shop was like okay well like the record label kind of pays for itself so maybe if we do the shop that will actually like get us some more money so that we can afford to do more pay stuff. ourselves the way yeah. we can we can afford to live while doing this full time and it's kind of it takes guts out. to it's go like, out on a limb and be like i'm gonna put my whole life into a record label slash record store yeah and it, it's a it's definitely a thing that you know it's got like I used to be working you know like full time job at the same time and the stress of kind of doing that as well as running pretty much a full time hobby yeah. project anyway and there's been points where I've been like I need to quit doing this because it's killing me working a job and doing it and then it's kind of at some point I was like okay well I'm just going to stop working a full time job and see how this works out like, concentrate on this for a while mm. while doing like other part time stuff to cover it and then it's kind of been a slow build to being like, okay, well, let's just try and just do that. And if we do the shop, then hopefully we'll make a bit more money. If we do all these other things that we do, yeah, hopefully we'll make a way to make it work. And then we can still, you know, spend all our time promoting records. How, and, so how long have you been going now? I'm just going to move uh, this camera. Pick this camera well, annoy those people, but you can't see. <laughs> there he is. Uh, there yeah. Go. So how well, long have you been? It's like years. Well, like the, the, years. the label's been a thing for ten years, like technically, but you know, kind of the first couple of years we put out one thing in two years, yeah, and yeah. then it kind of quick like built from there. So you know, we started doing like two or three releases a year, and then it's built. Probably the past five years, I guess we've done like ten releases a year, and then we've started doing other things like yeah. you know, opening the shop is obviously. A, massive one it's wicked because um, you can come in and see stuff and chat and be like oh what's this on the you know? yeah and that's kind of that's the idea we kind of wanted is like you know community we've been, yeah well like we've been selling to people for so long and like the the bands on the label such a community is like I don't want it to be this like exclusive thing that like people are like oh I like this label but like it's untouchable or whatever it's like I want people to come in that like our bands and like to meet people that like our bands and yeah. like you know so I'm gonna, this is this is my attempt at a segue. Okay. <laughs> um, talking about community and like uh, you know connectivity and all that kind of stuff, that was kind of the driving. Uh, that was kind of my inspiration for the Habit and Mindsets project because um, I just felt like the there was the punk rock community to me is like a really awesome place and it's full of like nice people most mostly good eggs obviously there's probably a few bad people or whatever but generally everyone's really nice and supportive and it's you know a good community people get together they rock you know play songs play music have a good time and hang and like what you know as soon as i even mention the words punk rock to like people that are outside of that community first thing they think of is like kids in Milwaukee being aggressive spray paint and what do you know what I mean it's got this weird stigma to it and um yeah I just thought I was explaining it to someone um like oh no punk rock it's not like that it's like I think some people like roll their eyes or something or like you know like I said oh I played a punk rock band they're like oh like and you're like no it's just a bunch of people just talking about life having existential crises and uh you know having a good time so yeah, that was the driving force for starting the project. Is to basically have a bit of have it like a ticket almost for people to come in and just look around and see what it's all about. Um, but yeah, so I'm looking to collaborate with some other artists and stuff. I might it might be worth trying to get hold of Hamish if he's still doing bits and pieces. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. yeah. I'm not really sure what he's. Up to. What he's. Yeah, but I've got he's been writing of... some stuff recently, but I don't know. Yeah, but um, what do you think? Like, do you, do you think that's kind of an accurate thing? Like, when you, people outside of the community think of. Yeah, I think. Well, I obviously there's a lot of misconceptions for. Yeah, people think of punk as 1977, people being obnoxious and yeah. you know spitting on things. Um, but I think like like the way you describe the punk scene is like you know there's lots of different music communities that are like that like mm. you know the metal scene um metal the, uh, electronic full music of the most scenes. lovely people i've ever met yeah and i think that's like <laughs> for outside perceptions it's like this scary thing that you don't understand but really it's just people that are enthusiastic about this style of music mm. and you know are really excited about that and really want to support bands and really like get enjoyment out of being into the thing that they're into and I guess you see that in like not just music scenes just any kind of hobbies and activities that people get into yeah, it's just so, a, you know like extreme sports and skating yeah and yeah it's like people that's a lifestyle that people get into and generally those things are a mm. positive influence yeah yeah do you think as well this came out the other day when I was speaking to someone but like there seems to be a crazy amount of like uh, in the punk rock community, bands and fans and stuff like that, there seems to be lots of people, an unusual amount, in fact, that are actually like artists, you know, like illustrators or filmmakers, photographers. Or it's kind of, I don't know. I, I, have you noticed that? Yeah, well, I think I think, you no, know, a big thing that's attractive about punk rock is that it is inclusive in way in a way that people are encouraged to contribute. It's like, yeah, I guess. you know, there's no barrier for access. It's like you want to play in a band cool you just need to know a power chord you need to know the basics yeah. and you can be in a band that everyone loves and the same with or like if you're a drummer you, know, you could be in 15 by the end of the week yeah <laughs> is it, but it's the same with like like if you want to write a zine like it doesn't need to you know as long as you put your all into it or like you put your personality yes. into it yeah. it's not like you need to know how to use photoshop to the best of your ability yeah. you can just write something down and it's the same with I feel like all kind of creative things within punk it's like it doesn't you don't need the best equipment you don't need to be taught how to do these things you can just do it and here's a group of people that it if it's good of they'll like, loads of, like appreciate like, it illustrators graphic um, photographers painted like an album art as well like album art's its own in my head it's own, its own like genre of art like it's got it's definitely like a, a subculture going on yeah well it's like it, I guess since the early days of punk it's always the aesthetic has always been a major part of it so there's a lot of history of building that and then you know even every kind of subgenre of punk you can kind of has its own style like you can almost look at a record and be like I know what this is going to sound like hmm. by the way it looks is it like as someone said uh, I wasn't I don't know too much about like but the hardcore scene like in the 90s or 80s and 90s there's lots of like hand illustrations on posters and things like that like monsters and stuff yeah, I, I think things kind of go through trends, yeah. like certain things in certain scenes will get popular and there'll be you know, yeah, someone yeah. who does that a lot or like, you know, there's a lot of people that will do one style of artwork and then a few other people will copy that and so certain scenes and angles look the same for a while and then they move yeah. on. Um, it's its own like culture, it's, it is. Yeah. It's, yeah, but I think like part of that is the supportive nature of it, it means that that you've seen these things and you're being encouraged to try it's like your friends are putting on a gig so they're like will you draw me a poster like yeah. and you've seen all these other ones that you like so you imitate that and like you know it's kind of like punk rock is not the most original genre of music anyway it's like <laughs> musically it's everyone imitating everyone else and trying to do a better version or a good copy of yeah. something else and so many covers but, and stuff like it's yeah. albums and stuff yeah, yeah but, like you know, I like it's, that. It's, it's not almost like, like homage, isn't it? It's like if your friend, if you like your friend's song in a band, you're like, oh, can we cover that? And then just like, yeah, it's like it's not breaking new ground for originality, no. but it's you it's know fun. it's an encouraging like that's not the point. It's like yeah. you don't have to be in the best band. You can do that, and yeah. you can be supportive of the scene, and <laughs> the scene will be supportive of you. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool. So, like, I know you're a busy man, so we we'll probably wrap up in a minute. But uh, is there anything? going on that you want to tell people about like in the shop any tours um, new bands coming on anything in particular 
I don't know. Like <laughs> at, the, at the moment, we're just yeah carrying on doing what we've always done. Got records coming out. Like we're just about to do the new Month Scales album, which is like what the fifth release that we've done with them. So it's been they've really, blown it's been up. Really they're huge now. They're just in Japan, right? Yeah, yeah. They've just been in Japan and like they've been touring ever. So it's been nice, kind of working with them from the very beginning to where they are now and kind of growing together supporting each other for a long time um, and yeah we're just always trying to find new bands that are good to promote and yeah putting on a few gigs like we got Camp Cope and Caves playing here soon definitely that, yet for that no, like, really like Lou from Camp, Caves Camp Cope sick like yeah that. Camp Cope are a great band and like yeah a very I found only found them a couple of months ago you know like I uh, Spotify is another huge rabbit hole to go down but yeah I found him on Spotify and I was just like amazing and I interrupted you seeing him about Lou uh yeah so um yeah like Lou Lou's been on tour with Camp Coat before and kind of her and me organised this tour for Camp Coat which is the first time that they've ever been over to you Europe so it's uh no I, yeah no I'm not going on it but we've kind of organised it it's been a really fun thing to work on like you know Camp Cope is such a great band and they're doing such great things for feminism in the scene and like you know calling out a lot of bullshit um and it's great to see having never come over here it's great to see the excitement about it because you know you don't see that that often anymore it's no. like lots of the shows are selling out and for bands to do that from are the other side the of the world really playing the uh yeah they're playing here at the exchange yeah cool. um so yeah really excited about that awesome cool cool beans right we'll uh, wrap it up there then.